Hello everyone, Grzegorz Baran here. In this video I am going to present the photogrammetry equipment I usually carry with myself to capture environments for photogrammetry reconstruction. At the beginning of the video I will briefly present all my equipment and next for those who are interested I will go into details with each piece of it and finally at the end I will show you my dog. So let's begin. This is the set of key equipment I use during my everyday photogrammetry trips. It took me a few years to build the setup and I can tell you that it works very well in a field. When packed, fits my backpack, but for any longer photogrammetry trip I would consider to carry a bit more spare memory cards and a bit more spare batteries. So these are a DSLR camera, a zoom lens, a tripod, a monopod with simple but solid ball head to mount the camera, x ray color checker passport, two 2 meter long folded rulers, a cable remote, a circular polarization filter, a duct tape, a fiber cloth to clean up the lens, a light reflector, a smartphone, spare memory cards, simple adapter to transfer data to the computer, an energy bank, the drone with spare batteries, a drone controller and a small landing pad. Plus a few more things like a small change for a car park and additional cables and spare blades for the drone. In practice, since I usually plan my photogrammetry trips, I don't carry everything with myself all the time. The final setup always depends on the weather conditions and the subject of the capture. Just bear in mind that the main purpose and the goal of this equipment is to capture the reality as it is. In photogrammetry we don't aim to collect beautiful images, but physical accuracy and per pixel quality. So every piece of equipment is a tool to collect clean, complete, accurate and usable data for photogrammetry reconstruction. Good capture can save us a lot of time and effort in next steps, a bad one might waste entire process. The quality and reliability of equipment we use has direct impact on the quality and usability of collected data. If it is not good enough to the job, we risk that the final result won't be useful for us and entire time spent on capture will be wasted. So the main goal of having and carrying this equipment is to make sure that every capture trip ends up by bringing a usable data for further reconstruction. Nothing more, nothing less. So let's go into details. The camera is definitely the main tool for the job and the result we get at the end strongly depends on it. Basically, any DSLR camera with at least 18 megapixels matrix should do the job. To get an accurate data, we need to fully control and understand what the camera captures. So, the manual setting where we fully control the aperture, ISO, white balance and the focal length is a must. We also need to store captured data in as informative format as possible, so the camera we use should offer an option to store data in RAW file format. Of course, the higher quality camera we use the better. The best would be a full frame camera since it captures the light information better, but it would be the most expensive one. Since the camera is one of those tools which is usually shared with other capture techniques, it is worth to invest and get a better one. For photometric stereo or single image based reconstruction, I would suggest a camera with at least 24 megapixels since these are techniques where resolution matters. The one I currently use is the Canon 80D. The feature I have found the most useful in this camera is the screen. It can be physically rotated and angled under different angles which is very handy during any surface capture. This screen functionality was the one of the main reasons I decided to pick a Canon as a brand ages ago. So far I used Canon 550D, 650D and currently 80D 
as each of those had a screen with adjustable angle and all worked very well. The Canon ATD also has an option for Wi-Fi connection which can be used to preview the screen and even to release the shutter using mobile but personally I have never used this feature because in photogrammetry we capture a lot of images and we capture them as fast as possible the battery capacity and the memory card speed used with the camera matters depending if we use the LCD screen or optical viewfinder the battery of Canon 80D can last from 300 to even 1000 images before it is fully drained and needs to be recharged because we store data in RAW files, we capture and store a lot of data. Slow memory card can be a real bottleneck, which forces us to wait before we can release the shutter again. Since for photogrammetry, we usually shot images in a series. For a series of few hundred images, even small delay matters and seconds fast turn into minutes. The camera I use is pretty heavy, which is a good and a bad thing. It is always easier to stabilize a camera when it is heavy, since it's less vulnerable to the wind. But it is also tough to carry around. Arms and muscles start to hurt after taking a few hundreds of images moving around the object. But I can tell that I'm very happy with this choice and even if I change the camera, I won't regret spending money on this one. If the camera is a mind, lens is an eye. The common focal length for photogrammetry is 24, 35 and 50 mm. The lens I use is a Canon 18 to 135 mm zoom lens. I experimented with many lenses so far and picked this one as have found it is the more useful for the job. I use a zoom lens instead of a fixed one intentionally. Having zoom is way more versatile and this is a key thing for environment capture. Of course it has some downsides. It's darker and less sharp to the fixed one. Also gets some distortion when the focal length is set close to the edge values. But as long I stay between 24 to 80 millimeters, it works great and is totally safe. A good lens is the most important and probably the most expensive piece of the camera equipment. It is also often pretty heavy. Even lower resolution image taken with a better lens is going to be more useful to the higher resolution image taken with a crappy one. It is worth to mention that photogrammetry software sees way more data we are able to notice on a screen. All that micro data matters for reconstruction and affects the final result. This is why any DSLR camera delivers data with the level of quality higher to what any mobile phone can deliver. I'm not telling that I cannot capture anything with a mobile phone, of course I can, but real big glass lens makes the difference and there is a reason why it is so expensive. It's just a pure physics. If I would need to pick a fixed lens for photogrammetry, I would pick probably 35mm one. To make sure the camera can do the job, we need to stabilize the camera. Otherwise, no matter what camera or lens we use, we risk getting blurred images. Physical stabilization is important since we usually shoot in poor lighting conditions without any direct source of light. With the ISO set as low as possible and quite small aperture, the image exposure time is usually quite long to stabilize the camera with hands. The best and the most reliable way to stabilize the camera I have found so far is to use a tripod. The one I use is the Manfrotto 190 GO. To reduce weight I picked the one with twisted lock mechanism. The one with fast lock is a bit heavier. The main reason I picked this one was the column system which lets me easily position the camera perpendicular to the ground. This feature is very useful and I use it all the time when I capture any ground surfaces.
The head is the connector between tripod and the camera. The one I use is the Manfrotto 494RC2 mini ball head with fast lock mechanism. It is a very simple but also strong and flexible head. Can hold my camera easily under any angle without any issues. Also the fast lock mechanism it has is very handy and personally I can't imagine any head without it anymore. This head can be also mounted on a monopod. The monopod is another way to stabilize the camera. The one I use is the Manfrotto MMX Pro A3B. It has quick lock system for legs which makes it a bit heavier but also very efficient to adjust the height. It has a small retractable base which gives an additional stabilization when needed, but I wouldn't rely on it as it works as a support only. For sure the monopod is way more flexible to the tripod, it gives way more options for positioning and as a tool is way more agile. It speeds up the capture process a lot when compared to the capture taken with a tripod. It is also way easier to carry. Unfortunately, the quality of images captured with a monopod used for camera stabilization will be always a bit lower and less reliable to those captured with the tripod. I suggest to use monopod just for close shots in decent lighting conditions and wouldn't use it for more complex surfaces like grass. However, uncertainty of the quality when we use monopod for stabilization can be always compensated by higher ISO setting. With a bit of practice and if properly used and for certain type of captures, monopod also can be very useful and reliable tool. I use the X-ray color checker passport as a tool to set up the white balance and as a reliable color reference. It has two sides, one is covered with color clips, which can be used for digital color calibration, and the other one contains gray card, which is useful for white balance setting. It is surprising to see how different everything looks like according to surrounding lighting conditions. Human mind has a mechanism which calibrates all we see for us and translates it into defined and expected colors. This is why we perceive snow as white, even if it's blue after being affected by the blue sky. The only way to make sure that white is white is to use a reference where color values are out of the discussion. The x ray color checker is an array of scientifically formulated color clips. The value of each color clip is known and strictly defined. This is why every capture has to include at least one image with color reference included. By the way, the color passport has two years of expire date if any of you is planning to get a used one. It is a good practice to use measurement tools to define the capture space and use them as scale reference. It is very hard to estimate a real scale of any surface later without having any scale references included in images. I use folded rulers as a scale reference, but also to organize the way I move the camera during the capture. The common mistake during photogrammetry captures are the lack of coverage and coverage inconsistency. I have found these rulers are super useful and helpful in navigation during the capture. Since I started using them, all my captures are way more consistent, way better organized and way better covered. I also don't waste my time anymore uh, to overshoot unnecessary areas or capture something twice as I wasn't sure was it covered already or not. I was experimenting with many tools for this purpose and have tested many types of rulers and so far can tell that folded rulers works the best 
from these two, the white one, which is made with plastic, is a better one. The reason for that is that the graduation has more contrast and is more visible even after reconstruction. The wooden one has yellow patches every 10 cm, but since the contrast isn't good enough, they and the graduation are usually barely visible. Pressing the release shutter button on the camera causes the camera's micro shake. The way to avoid the micro movement is to do not touch camera when the shutter is being released. It can be done in many ways and one of them is to use a cable remote. I used to use it a lot, but I don't anymore, unless the lighting conditions aren't really terrible. Surprisingly, I have found it's very useful when the camera is mounted on a monopod and I need to release the shutter without having access to the camera. It happens when I extend the camera on monopod to capture higher vertical surfaces or when I shoot the ground from the higher distance. The big advantage of this remote is that it is very simple and cheap and works as an extension of the release button with its full functionality. Also the way to connect it to the camera is way more straightforward to any other sophisticated wireless crap I was trying to play with before. It is definitely another must-have piece of equipment. The next is the circular polarization filter. The polarization filter can be mounted on the last lens ring. When used properly, it can remove reflections and speculars from shiny and reflective surfaces. It is especially useful when we capture metal surfaces. Unfortunately, when used, it reduces the amount of light which gets to the camera, about 3 stops, and it has to be compensated with a longer exposure time. It is a piece of glass used to remove reflections under a certain angle. By rotating it, we decide what angle of light we removed. It can remove reflections under one specific angle at the same time. For example, LCD monitors emit polarized light, typically at 45 degrees to the vertical so when the polarizer axis is perpendicular to the polarization of the light from the screen, no light passes through and the polarizer appears black. Since in open environment, when we get a lot of light reflections coming from different sources under different angles, effectiveness of the polarization filter is limited. Polarization filter works the best when used with the cross polarization technique. Duct tape is a very useful and handy part of equipment and I advise to always have one with you. You never know when you might need it. For example, when facing the camera down for ground captures, big heavy zoom lens can untwist itself, pushed by the gravity, and change accidentally its focal length. For photogrammetry, we have to keep the same focal length for entire capture. The lens, which randomly changes the focal length for every image, is the last thing we want. It happens often when I move fast with the monopod used for stabilization and the camera facing down. So to make sure it won't happen and focal length stays untouched, I use simple duct tape to lock its position. I use simple microfiber cloth to clean up the camera lens from dust when needed. I carry just one and use it also for the drone's camera. There is nothing fancy with this one and I believe this part is self-explanatory. The light reflector is a quite big and unhandy piece of equipment. This is the last line of defense when I have to shoot in sunny, open environment. I use it to cast a shadow during the surface captures when I have no other choice. Usually it's hard to carry and hard to hold, especially in a windy weather. It doesn't fit any of my backpacks, so I attach it outside. Before taking it into any trip, it is worth to learn how to fold and unfold it first, since it's not as easy as it looks like. But as a tool it can be really useful. It can be used even as a background when I use other capture techniques like photometric stereo. The one I use has four optional colors, black, white, silver and gold. The most useful for photogrammetry is the black one. 
the light reflector should face the subject with a black side, since this way we don't affect the subject surface with any bounced light. The white from the other side is very useful as a background for photometric stereo captures. I carry it with myself only if I really need to. The smartphone is another piece of equipment I always carry with myself. I use Galaxy Note since it's quite powerful and reliable and has big and bright screen. For photogrammetry I use it mostly to capture documentary and reference images. When use the drone I plug it into the controller and use it as a screen. Since the main goal of photogrammetry equipment is to collect data, it is very important to have enough storage space to store this data when collected. Spare batteries and spare memory cards are the must-have for any longer photogrammetry trip. Regarding the size, I use 128GB memory cards, as I believe it's enough space to do not have to switch them too often, but also enough to do not risk big data loss in case of any da data corruption. A card too small could fill up and leave us without any free space when we need it the most. Regarding to speed, I use those which offers right speed about 90 megabytes per second. For photogrammetry we collect really a lot of data and slow or poor, poor quality memory card can be a real bottleneck. I would not recommend to make any savings on memory cards for sure. To transfer captured data from memory cards to the computer I carry a simple adapter. I tested some fancy ones but sooner or later they all broke and I end up with a really cheap and a simple one. I also carry a cable I can use to recharge my mobile or drone controller if needed. This one is a USB to USB-C. It can be also used as a backup connection to connect my smartphone with the drone controller. The drone is another very useful tool for photogrammetry and I carry it with myself all the time. The one I have is a Mavic 2 Pro. When folded and packed it doesn't take much space and is not very heavy. The images taken with this drone have lower quality to any images taken with any DSLR camera when compared. The Mavic 2 Pro camera has the worst barrel distortion I ever seen. But in return, the drone provides access to positions and angles not available for a camera mounted on a tripod or monopod. To fly the drone, I use a standard DJI controller. Since I have found that it takes way too much time to attach and detach control sticks before and after every flight, I decided to save some time to buy a cover which covers and secures them during the transport. This way there is no need to attach and detach them every time anymore. As I mentioned before, I use my smartphone as a screen for the controller. Because without a power nothing is gonna work, I carry an energy bank with myself. The one I have has capacity of 25,000 milliamps, which is enough to fully charge my mobile, the drone controller and all three drone batteries I have. A single Mavic 2 Pro battery lasts for about 30 minutes of flight. Depends on the weather conditions and the way drone flies, it can drain even faster. I would say that the average is about 25 minutes. This is why I always carry three fully charged drone batteries as it gives me roughly about one hour and a half of flying time. I'm still considering to get one more since I have found a few times that three were not enough.
I also carry with myself a small folded landing pad. It fits any backpack I use without any problem. I don't use it for landing though. The main purpose of this landing pad is to get the clean surface where I can prepare the drone and the controller for takeoff. When ready, I use it for the takeoff, but when the drone is in the air, I fold the landing pad back and hide it in a backpack. Since this landing pad is just 50 cm wide, I prefer to simply hand land the drone after. I also carry a set of spare drone propellers as a replacement in case I find any damaged. I carry the drone, controller, spare batteries and spare propellers as well as a few more cables and adapters in this small bag. The bag itself is very durable and secures the drone very well and fits any of my backpacks. And finally the backpack. I have tested really many backpacks before and I have found the one I use as a really good choice to carry all that equipment. It is a Manfrotto off-road hiker with 30 liters capacity. The backpack is really well made and is quite easy to carry. It was specifically designed for hiking and photography so I can get easy access to my camera without even taking it off. The bottom part has stripes to mount a heavy tripod while a monopod can be mounted using the side stripes. The drone fills the top section of the backpack while the camera and any other lenses sits in the camera's container section. So far I didn't have any issues with it, but might consider a change into something smaller or something where I can keep the drone unpacked. I also don't like how this backpack handles the tripod as I would prefer to have it mounted on site. Currently I need to take it off and put on the ground to detach the tripod. This is not the fixed set of equipment and I would encourage everyone to experiment with setups which works better for you and match your budget. It took me a few years to build this setup and I can tell you that it works very well for me. I'm quite happy with this setup and accept the standard gear upgrades. The only big thing I might consider to add in the future is a strong LED flashlight. The one which can be used to override the environment light for close range surface captures and which can help to remove speculars when used together with the cross polarization. In details I'm thinking about a Godox AR400 LED flashlight, but it's a plan for a future since it's quite an investment. Of course as soon I have one, I will share the results and experience with you for sure. And finally, for those who ask which dog on my previous videos is mine, the answer is none of them. This is my dog and I don't carry him with myself on any photogrammetric capture trips. He is too lazy to follow me and too intelligent to listen to me. And too sweet. So I wouldn't be able to focus on a job. Thanks for watching, I hope you have found something useful for yourself in this video and see you in the next one. Bye!
Oh, my God.